I just thought tonight would be a good night to talk to you and give you an update on what's happening at the library. So during this time when our building has been closed, library staff have adapted all of our services and how we provide them to our community, as well as developing new and incorporating new services that we plan on providing even after the pandemic is over. So let's start with curbside pickup. Come on, I gotta move your guys' heads on my screen. So this is what curbside pickup looks like. So that is the front desk of the library with one day's worth of holds from our library as well as from other libraries in the cooperative that we are working on getting checked in. And then this is the second piece of that. So on the right hand side, you see um, holds that are now alphabetical by um, people's names as well as one day's worth of curbside bags packed for appointments. So the library is doing curbside service every 10 minutes, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, as well as accommodating people who um, can't, whose schedule doesn't incorporate into ours um, individually. So people who um, that doesn't work for them or they're only in town on certain days, um, accommodating them as well. So last month in March, we did over 700 curbside appointments and checked out 7,000 items to our public, which um, for the second month of in a row is um, almost double our closest comparables and um, more than Salem Public Library. So um, it is an immense service that is um, continuing to grow. And when you look at those pictures, I kind of want you guys to remember that in January, we lost three staff positions and two more of our staff got their hours cut pretty significantly. So it's more with less people. The next thing I wanna to talk to you is about um, story time. So we're currently providing a live story time via Zoom every Tuesday morning at 10. And then our staff is also preparing an, on, an accompanying online um, option so that families whose kids are going to school or whose schedules are really busy can follow along and lose, use those resources at their own pace. We've seen um, our content on our YouTube channel get a lot of use that way as families try to work in those skills and build in that early literacy time with their children at their own pace, as well as um, using new services. So um, Jennifer created with the help of SCTC, the state and storyline. So families can call that number any day, any time and have a story read to them by one of our library staff. She was um, actually written up in a statewide blog about children's services because of that. And that's one of those services that I don't think we would have ever thought of except during this time. And it's something that we'll continue to provide. So if you call that storyline in the month of April, you'll get a poem because it's National Poetry Month. And so library staff are taking turns reading poems into that. So um, you guys might wanna check that out. We're also providing take and make kits for all ages. So on Saturday, we gave out um, over 200 take and make kits to the community. They're um, projects for kids, teens, and adults. The kids projects typically have one that's more STEM based. So, and then one that's, <clears throat> sorry, more art based. So this month we also did a family, <clears throat> a family project kind of to celebrate Earth Day. So we did um, seed bombs that can be done as a family project. So we were very fortunate to have grant money to be able to continue to provide these through the end of the year or through the end of till, till June. Um, they're very popular and um, we provide them through uh, drive through pickup. So this is what it looks like the first Saturday of the month in front of, on the side, I was gonna say in front of the library, but on the side of the library by the meeting room. And this is what the results of those look like. So um, those are finished projects or projects in progress that they're working on. So um, I think those projects make a big difference in our community. It's another way for us to provide the programming that we'd, we would usually provide in a different method. And um, we've had tremendous positive feedback on those. Then our big piece that has to look a lot different right now is how we help people browse for books. So um, we are pretty much open to all kinds of crazy ideas at the library. So we are working individually with patrons to help them do customized lists 
or surprise bags or um, suggestions for authors that they might try. For kids, um, we're doing a monthly book booster program where kids get a like a tasting of a different kind of genre in a chapter book to try, as well as cards to rate them and um, and, a, and some extras, as well as a, a sheet for parents that says, remember it's a tasting and we want them to have fun with this and explore. So don't make them read it like homework if they don't like it. And then um, we're also all in on um, crazy phone experiments. So I've used my cell phone and read titles off a shelf to patrons on the phone. We've had people call and say, hey, I want 10 inspirational fiction books and I'm totally done with the Amish. Can you pick 10 for me? Um, we're all in on how we can make that work for them because we know that's one place where it's gonna look a little different for right now. And then these are the other services that we're providing. So we, with the help of SCTC, we were able to pump our Wi-Fi all the way out to the parking lot. You can easily get it almost out to the reader board. And then um, we provide printing and scanning for people all of the time. And then as part of CCRLS and in cooperation with the college, we were able to get 10 hotspots as part of a grant that the cooperative won. And so um, those hotspots, we got them processed the week before the ice storm which was very convenient as we spent a long week trying to help people get reconnected to the internet and to school. And those, um, the timing of those could not have gone any better. So we still have some of those. I think the majority of those are checked out, but I have a little bit of those left. And then we're also a big place for tax resources. We provide forms for people. We work with our AARP group that weren't able to do in-person services this year, but we connected a lot of people to them and um, just trying to get people the services that they need. And more. So um, these are other things we've done during this time. We've done scavenger hunts in downtown businesses. We've done scavenger hunts in the park for summer reading. We've um, done things like, we hung up a backdrop for Halloween so families could take Halloween pictures outside. So that's um, one of our Storytime kids in his Black Panther con costume that his parents sent us from their Halloween pictures. We've worked with um, this in cooperation with the State and Public Library Foundation. We gave out books. We're giving out books monthly at school meal sites, as well as Wol the Wolf Ridge Apartment Complex. And we've done so much more. And that is the end of what I brought for you, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. Are there any questions for Jenna? Nice presentation, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Jana, uh, yes. two things. A, I'm blown away. Like I knew that you had been doing a lot of cool services, but I'm just blown away. So congratulations for all the effort that you and your team have put together. So that leads me to my second question. How do we, um, give back? What can we do to get, like, can we come down and volunteer some hours? Um, and then I've got some other ideas I'd like to touch base with you outside of uh, city council to talk about some other things, but what can people do to help? So um, right now I can't do volunteers, Chris, but I appreciate the thought about that. Mm -hmm. But what I can do, what we do need people to do is to talk to their friends and tell them what's happening at the library. We need you guys to be um, to share our posts and um, and remember that we're there and let people know that just because library services look a little different right now doesn't mean that we're not there. And I think that's probably the most important thing that could happen. Jana, I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about posts just for the, the YouTube uh, sharing, um, what what is your guys' uh, YouTube channel called and uh, which posts, uh, is it through Facebook, Instagram, uh, what, what kind of platforms? You can share uh, our Facebook posts. So our Facebook's um, called um, Join Us at the State and Public Library. And then the State and Library has a YouTube channel. You can see YouTube videos, they're connected through our website, but we also have a State and Library channel. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. 
this, this is Council Ort. Mm -hmm. um, I do not have a question, but I just want to give a kudos to Janet and her staff. Um, I picked up one of the bistro boxes for last month and my kids loved it. It was an adventure series and they were really excited about Kitty and uh, it was some sort of treasure hunt. But anyway, um, it's a series. And so now they want to read the rest of it. So um, they can't read by the, on the, well, they're, they're learning, they're uh, early learners. So um, we read it together and it's a lot of fun. Um, but I wanted to say thank you for that. And um, if you haven't gotten one of those or the make and takes, they're lots of fun as well. And thank you for doing that, Jana. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is Councilor Patty. Oh, there we go. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just was going to say, Jana, very nice job. There was a lot of things here that could serve my kids pretty well that I wasn't even aware of, and I will be sure to spread the word. So thank you so much for this presentation. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you.